Cats love all kinds of rubs and pets, but there are specific areas where they like it the most. Many kitties would close their eyes and start purring, slowly going to sleep while you rub the top of their head, their cheeks, or the bridge of their nose. And while they're nodding off, they'll yawn, of course. Scientists aren't exactly sure of the reasons behind cats yawning, but the main one seems to be similar to that of us humans. When the brain needs more oxygen to stay awake, the easiest way to get it is to have a big, deep yawn. So when a cat does it, you can be pretty certain your kitty wants to doze off. Sometimes, though, cats yawn at their humans just to show how relaxed they are in your company. So it's also a sign of affection and trust. But you don't need to be told that while your furry buddy is lying on your lap with its eyes closed and purring like a diesel engine, right? Any proud cat person knows that waking up at 3 a.m. every night is no big deal. Likely as not, the ball of fluff you live with will run around the place like crazy. This behavior is totally normal. In most cases, it means your cat has too much pent-up energy it needs to use. Your furry friend is likely to spend most of its time, about 18 hours a day, catching some Z's. It doesn't get enough exercise during the day and tries to find some outlet for all that energy. If you've just moved to a new place, there might be some pests already living there. Your cat, with its hypersensitive hearing and smell, might pick up their presence. Most insects are more active at night. Your kitty won't be able to rest with them scuttling around. So you'd better get rid of the pests as soon as you can. If your cat wouldn't calm down even during the day, best take it to see the vet. Your pet is likely to have some problems that make it feel physical discomfort. For example, fleas. Sometimes cats begin to chatter their teeth. Some specialists believe it happens when the animals get frustrated. Their potential prey seems to be so close, just outside the window, but still out of their reach. Other experts think that such bizarre jaw movements let your pet get prepared for catching its food. Either way, you'll only see your cat doing it when there's something small and probably edible in its field of view. Unlike dogs, cats rub their heads against people and objects, not for want of attention, but to mark their territory. Cats have special glands near the cheeks that leave their scent behind. When your puss has rubbed against you, it has claimed you as its own, so it won't be wary next time it approaches you. If it's someone else's cat, it may even let you rub it between the ears. And what can be better? If your cat starts to roll around on its back in front of you, it's a great compliment. For felines, it's an extremely vulnerable position. If your kitty isn't afraid of showing you its unprotected belly, you've earned its trust. And if your pet is rolling around on the floor, it wants to inform you it's playtime. Your feline friend may start to scratch around its food bowl after the meal is over, or even cover it with some shredded paper. It's normal, instinctive behavior. The cat wants its food to be hidden and safe from others. Try to at least hide your disgust if you find a mouse or a bird next to your bed, or even on your very pillow. If your cat brings you its catch, that means it recognizes you as a member of its group and cares deeply about your well-being. It might also think that you're not that good of a hunter to catch prey on your own. But anyway, it's a sign of affection on the kitty's part. And since you're feeding your ball of fluff all the time, it might say thank you this way too. Every once in a while, you may catch your cat sneering. This phenomenon has a scientific name, but it sure looks like a scornful lip curl. You won't see it directed your way, though. It's a reaction to other cats' invisible messages. Your cat picks up pheromones from the nearby felines. The lip curl is produced when your kitty traps these pheromones with its tongue against the roof of the mouth. Male cats sneer more often than females. A feline equivalent of a kiss is that slow blinking you might notice from time to time. If you do, know that your kitty trusts you entirely, and what's more, it loves you. You can blow it a kiss back too. Just look it in the eye and slowly blink as well. It probably won't show, but your cat will know you love it back. If you look your cat in the eye and its pupils start to increase in size though, better stop doing that or you might get in trouble. Just like yours, cats' pupils grow to better see the things in front of it. But in their case, 
They want to see you better to best coordinate their actions that are very soon to follow. Other signs of your kitty preparing for an assault are wagging its tail and moving its hind legs in place. It leaps forward with a push, so it's a clear call for you to run. Another sign that it's time to back off is your cat twitching its ears. That's how it expresses its agitation or anxiety. If you keep bothering the animal, it might attack you. But if the cat's ears are pointed upright, it's listening to some noise that's attracted its attention. Sweet little meows from your cat are the way it greets you. After making this cute sound, it may jump in your lap and demand some cuddling. But if the meow is loud and demanding, the feline is likely to be hungry. Either feed your fluffy companion right away, or explain why it's going to get its meal later. When you sleep, your eyes move under your lids. If your cat is somewhere nearby, it can get curious and swat at your face. Not to get accidentally injured, it's better to shut your kitty out of your room at night. If it scratches at the door and cries, put something a feline wouldn't want to step on near the entrance. It can be double-sided sticky tape, aluminum foil, or vinyl carpet runner with its knobby side up. Give your kitty the biggest meal of the day in the evening. Cats tend to fall asleep after they've eaten a lot. Have you ever been snuggling with your kitty when it starts pressing its little paws into you over and over again? When cats do this sort of bread-kneading motion, it's actually leftover from their kitten days when they used to nurse. You see, nursing kittens instinctively know to press their paws into their mommy's belly to help get the milk flowing, which means dinner time. But even after they grow up and stop nursing, this behavior sticks around, and it means that your cat is happy and comfortable. They also do it as a way to relieve stress, since this is a very calming ritual they innately know how to do. If your cat does this often, it means that they feel comfortable and protected by you, as if you were their mom. Cats can sometimes be distant. Okay, they can be distant all the time. If your cat likes to hang out alone and not be bothered, this is pretty normal feline behavior. If it seems to distance itself from you more than usual, though, it's worth looking into. If you find that your cat is watching you from afar but never wants to engage, this could be a sign that it's anxious or even mad at you. Cats may opt to hang out solo if they hear a startling loud noise or if there's unusual activity in the home, like construction or a big party. Unfortunately, there's not really much you can do about the situation except give the cat space. Just give it some room and don't get in its face. It'll eventually come around and want attention again. So, you buy your cat the most expensive scratching post, yet your kitty still wants to sink its claws into your new leather couch. Yes, it can be very frustrating and downright confusing. The root of this behavior is the cat's desire to be territorial. Felines like to scratch furniture to show others what's theirs. You can think of these scratches as designated boundary lines. If you want to save your poor furniture, you can spray your things with a cat pheromone spray to help it calm down. You've been tossing and turning for several hours since you can't fall asleep. You get out of bed and freeze with fear. Two glowing eyes are looking at you from the other side of the room. You can't move and start to tremble. It seems you're about to faint, but wait a minute. That's a mirror over there. There's no outsider in your apartment. You're looking at yourself. And that's even scarier, so you lose consciousness. In the morning, you come to your senses, go to the mirror, and find out you have narrow vertical pupils like a cat. You scream in horror and run out of the apartment. You put on sunglasses so no one can see your eyes and get into the elevator. A fly is buzzing around here. You're following it with your eyes and notice something strange. You've never seen this insect so clearly in your life. You can watch the trajectory of its flight and how it's moving its appendages and flapping its wings. It seems the fly is under your control. You can easily catch it with your hand. At this moment, the elevator arrives on the first floor. You get to the hospital, take off your glasses, and beg a doctor to explain what's going on. She's shocked. Oh, come on, doc. Don't be so dramatic. You think changing your pupils is not a big deal. It's just black dots in your eyes, so what? But in fact, your lifestyle affects their shape. Now, 
When you have the eyes of a cat, you can see the world from a different incredible angle. But first, you have to understand what a pupil is and why you need it. Your eyes absorb light through these tiny black holes. Then, your brain processes it and turns it into an image. It's black because this is the best color for absorbing light. When it's bright outside and there's enough light to see the world around, your pupils narrow. And in the dark, your pupils dilate. They greedily absorb all the particles of light to make you see better. And the first difference between cats' pupils and human ones is not their shape, but their ability to expand. When they're dilated, our pupils are 15 times larger than a narrowed form. But for a cat, this difference is 130 times. Huge pupils allow these animals to see much better in the dark. Look at this pet in a room with the lights off. See its glowing eyes? It's all the light the cat's pupils manage to absorb. The shape of the pupils depends on the lifestyle that a living creature leads. Let's take a look at a goat with horizontal pupils, for example. Thanks to their rectangular shape, this animal sees the world panoramically. This is necessary to detect danger around. The wider the image in the goat's eyes, the more likely it is to notice a wolf hiding among the grass. Even when a goat lowers its head to eat, its eyes still look forward. The eyeballs are rotating to keep their focus on the horizon. Also, when a goat runs, the horizontal panoramic picture helps it see all the obstacles in its path better. Now, a cat must hunt to survive in the wild. Unlike a goat, it doesn't scan an area, but focuses on one specific target. Narrow vertical pupils help with that. The brain transforms the incoming light into a thin, more focused image. Thanks to this vision, cats can compute the distance to running mice. These calculations are necessary to jump with precision and hit the target. People don't need to hunt and scan an area for wolves. All we need is to see a good picture and focus on objects. Our round pupils are perfect for this. Big cats, tigers, and lions also have round pupils. Scientists don't know exactly why, but the basic hypothesis is that these animals don't need to focus on a target too much, as their tall stature gives an excellent overview. So the narrow shape of the pupils strangely changes your life. When you walk down the street and see a person ahead, you immediately understand what distance they are from you and how many steps you need to take to reach them. Don't be surprised that a passerby gets scared. Just imagine you're walking and some guy with vertical pupils is staring at you. The self-preservation instinct will tell you to run away. In the beginning, your life gets worse. It's difficult for you to live with a vertical vision. It's pretty annoying to know how far away an object is. When you look at people's faces, you see them through portrait mode, like on your phone's camera. And sometimes, during a conversation, your eyes may focus on some part of their faces. Just imagine, you clearly see the speaker's nose, but the rest of their face is blurred. It can also be just a talking mouth in portrait mode. But the most exciting thing is their eyes. When you see them, you understand a person much better. You know if they're lying, or when they become angry or sad your eyes work as a powerful lie detector. One day, you visit your friend's farm. You want to feel like a cat in the wild, so you hide among the tall grass next to the pasture with grazing sheep. You're looking at them and feel your muscles tense up. Some natural instinct is awakening in you. You know how far the sheep are and how much effort it will take to catch one of them. You're ready to jump. The sheep seem to feel someone is scanning them. Their instincts make them nervous. Are you okay? You're acting pretty weird, your friend says, standing nearby. You come to your senses and return to the house. There's a lake near the farm. You go there and dive under the water. With normal pupils, everything would be blurred. Now, the sharper focus allows you to see fish swimming in the distance and details of the sandy bottom. You come out of the lake and realize that narrow pupils would have been a great superpower if you had lived in the Stone Age. You would have hunted all day and night productively and become the leader of your tribe. But in the modern world, such eyes give you few advantages and a lot of problems. Sometimes you might not notice a pole on the street and crash into it. Also, you are afraid to drive now. You're too distracted by focusing on small objects. You need to see the whole picture of the road with all the signs and cars at once. You always buy the furthest seats at the cinema since the screen is too wide for you. If you're sitting in the middle, 
you need to turn your eyes from one edge to the other to follow the movie. You're tired of this life. Fortunately, everything changes when you buy a chocolate bar. You've taken the wrapper off and thrown it in the trash on the street. As you were doing it, your brain received a signal from the pupils focused on the bucket. In an instant, you felt its distance, the angle, and the depth. Then, your muscles automatically tensed so you could hit the target, and the wrapper flew perfectly into the bucket. But what if it was not the wrapper in the trash can, but something else, you think? Now you're standing in a sports arena with a basketball in your hands. Without any preparation and training, you score again and again from long distance. You join the team and set a record for the number of three-point shots. Then you try to play darts. You can easily hit targets, so you win several local championships. You've become so used to focusing on details that you've forgotten about the big world. So, one night, you decide to take a walk in a field. The moon illuminates the area well, and your wide pupils absorb this light. Everything looks as bright as in the middle of the day, but in darker colors. You lie down on the grass and look at the starry sky for the first time in your new life. This is magnificent! You see a million stars of different brightness, the tales of passing comets, even the outlines of nebulae. All this beauty is reflected in your big eyes. You're charmed by it. You spend several hours on the grass until the first sun rays come. Yeah, life with a cat's pupils is not so bad, you think, and leave the field. Meet Sir Fluffy. Look, it's hanging from a tree, practically upside down. Cats have this superpower thanks to their claws. If you take a closer look at a cat's paw, you might think it has no claws at all. But contrary to a well-known myth, cats don't hide their claws inside their paws. Right now, you just can't see them because of the fur. But what if you turn on your x-ray vision? <clears throat> okay, I know, but let's assume you have it. You can see the bony flanges of a cat's toes. They end in sharp claws. There are two tendons in each toe. One long tendon connects the tip of the cat's toe to the bottom of its foot. And another short tendon connects the tip of the toe to the previous flanks. When Sir Fluffy is calm and doesn't need to use its claws, the upper tendon tightens and the lower tendon relaxes. You can try doing this too. Put your hand on the floor, palm down. Then bend your fingers so that their tips are touching the palm and your fingernails are touching the floor. Now, try lifting your fingers without taking your palm off the floor. If you can raise your nails off the floor, congratulations! You're just like a cat. Interestingly, the cat's hind paws are designed differently. The animal can't hide and release the claws on them. Dogs can't retract their claws. That's why you hear them hitting the floor when your pooch is walking. But Sir Fluffy can sneak up on you silently because its claws are up at the moment. Plus, cats walk by leaning on their toes rather than the whole foot, like, for example, humans. Cats use their claws for more than just climbing and playing. The last flanks of their toes carries most of their weight. Normally, a cat's center of gravity is in the front above its paws. When a cat is standing, it's possible to draw a straight line from that point to the floor right through the cat's paws. If it weren't for the claws on the tips of their toes, cats would be unstable and wouldn't have that perfect balance. So, claws are very important to cats, which is why they keep scratching soft furniture. They do this to sharpen their claws, but not to make them look like little hooks. These animals try to get rid of the top layer of their claws. A cat's toe ends in a cylindrical bone, and the claw grows in a round shape right out of that bone. By comparison, people have flat nails that start growing where the cuticle begins. It means the nail actually grows not from the tip of the finger or toe, but from its base. The cuticle just pushes the nail forward. A cat's claw grows like a snakeskin. Every new layer appears right under the old one. And this new claw grows inside the old one, like in a case. When a cat scratches your couch, it's not trying to make the tip of the claw sharper. The animal is getting rid of the worn-out top layer. So don't be alarmed if you find a piece of your cat's claw in your apartment. Your pet is fine, it just got rid of an old claw shell, like a snake gets rid of its old skin. In structure, cat's claws are more like human teeth. They too grow out of bone, even though our teeth don't renew themselves over time. Outdoor cats usually sharpen their claws naturally when they run on the pavement or climb a tree. House cats have to use your furniture. Aren't we lucky? 
But you can always make a special toy for your pet. For example, try wrapping some rope around a table leg. And keep in mind that sharpening its claws isn't a bad habit for your cat. It's a necessity, and it'll keep your pet healthy for years to come. Now, if your cat keeps scratching the couch, though, try dabbing a drop of lemon or orange oil on that spot. Cats dislike this smell and won't even go near your furniture. But in this case, provide your cat with a decent alternative for sharpening its claws. As cats get older, their claws become much stronger and more difficult to sharpen. That's when your pet may need some help. You can cut its claws with clippers, but you need to be very careful and precise. If you look at a claw under bright light, you'll see where the toe bone ends. It's important to cut the claw just below this bone to avoid damaging the toe. Whiskers are hairs that grow near the cat's nose and eyes. They have a denser structure and are several times longer than regular fur. But their main feature is hidden under the skin. Let's take a closer look at Sir Fluffy's mustache. Each whisker grows from a hair pouch, which is surrounded by hundreds of nerve endings. The whiskers near the eyes are united by the trigeminal nerve. You have such a nerve too, by the way. Even though whiskers are often called tactile hairs, they don't feel anything. But cats can perceive the slightest vibrations in the air with their whiskers. For example, if we put Sir Fluffy in a completely dark room, where even the cat's enhanced eyesight won't help, the animal will freeze in place and listen with the help of its whiskers. Light air currents get reflected from nearby objects, such as furniture. Whiskers pick up these currents like antenna. Hundreds of nerve endings then send a signal to the animal's brain. And Sir Fluffy can analyze the arrangement of objects in a completely dark room. They can avoid obstacles and go around the corners without touching them. Since whiskers can pick up such slight vibrations, they're also called vibrissae. Cats can move them. For example, when a cat yawns, its whiskers move slightly forward. Cats also use them to assess whether they'll fit through a narrow hole. Because of the increased sensitivity of the cat's whiskers, you need to use a wide, flat bowl to feed your pet. If your cat constantly bends its whiskers against the walls of the narrow bowl, they might lose their sensitivity. And it'll be as if you've lost your vision. The tail helps cats to keep their balance and serves as a kind of communication. Usually, the cat's center of gravity is above its front paws. But if the animal moves its tail back, the center of gravity will also shift back. This helps cats jump. When a cat walks on a narrow surface, like a fence, its tail is lifted. Then the animal's weight rests on its front paws, and it can easily keep its balance. You can always tell a cat's mood by its tail. If Sir Fluffy's tail is pulled up like an antenna when the animal is walking, it's content and wants to cuddle or play. And if the tip of the tail is wiggling, the cat is especially happy. If the tail is up in the shape of a question mark, try to find some time for your pet. Most likely, it's sad and wants affection. If Sir Fluffy's tail is down, you should be careful. If you spook the cat now, it may get unfriendly. Beware of its sharp claws and fast reactions. When Sir Fluffy hides its tail under its body, this most likely means the animal is afraid. If the cat's tail is sticking up like a pipe and its fur is standing on end, the cat is trying to scare you away. The animal does it by trying to appear bigger than it really is. This happens when the animal wants to protect its territory. When Sir Fluffy whips its tail from side to side, it's trying to signal that no one should come close to it. If you do decide to approach the animal, it might take it as a challenge and fight you. The tail's slow swishing indicates that Sir Fluffy is very focused on something at the moment. It might have seen a mouse or a bird outside the window. Sometimes, your cat may freeze, huddling on the floor and slowly moving its tail. It means the animal is ready to make a dash for something. And if Sir Fluffy comes up to another cat and wraps its tail around it, you better leave them alone. This is how cats cuddle and express a romantic mood. When you're about to feed your cat, it's likely to start rubbing against your feet and putting its tail around you. This is the ultimate expression of that love your pet feels for you.